Um, well, one effort that we also need to think about squashing is uh, including Neera Tandon in any type of position of power uh, within Biden's administration. And shockingly enough, uh, Republicans might be the ones who saved the day <laughs> um, in preventing Neera Tandon from um, being in Biden's administration. But let me give you the details on that because I've been dying to talk about this. So. In a giant middle finger to progressives, Joe Biden has announced that he wants Neera Tandon to be the head of the Office of Management and Budget, an incredibly powerful and important position within the federal government. And to be clear, Tandon certainly uh, does not have a friendly relationship with progressives, despite the fact MSNBC inaccurately describes her as one. Now, uh, she has gotten into many battles with progressives on Twitter. Maybe that's part of the reason why she's been deleting thousands of her own tweets ever since uh, Biden made this announcement. Um, but I do want to remind you of just how physical her hatred uh, for progressives has gotten in the past. Watch. Uh, Tandon had a strongly worded letter addressed to her from Senator Bernie Sanders just last year who wrote this. The Center for American Progress leader Neera Tandon repeatedly calls for unity while simultaneously maligning my staff and supporters and belittling progressive ideas. Tandon has had a combative relationship with progressives, not just politically, but also physically. Tandon is accused of punching Faz Shakir, Biden, uh, Bernie's 2020 campaign manager, in the chest back in 2008 when he asked her a candidate Hillary Clinton a question that Tandon did not like. She says she did not punch him. She pushed him. So she's admitting to getting physical with someone she disagrees with. Um, but even though there are some real substantive policy disagreements between corporate Democrats like Neera Tandon and uh, progressive voters, you know, you can always rely on corporate Democrats to try to rebrand the situation as something that it's not. You can always rely on them to latch on to allegations of sexism or what have you, you know, the identity politics in order to squash any legitimate criticisms that uh, leftists or progressives might have. And here's Andrew Gillum doing just that. As we hear the unfolding of the attacks against Neera Tandon, please suspend with this. She's, you know, the ultra left wing of the Democratic Party establishment. That's not what that is. What they are challenging is a strong, brilliant, powerful, savvy, experienced woman calling them on the carpet using facts, period. That's really funny because I have yet to see her use facts in responding to the very real material concerns uh, that Americans have, uh, that the left has essentially brought up in debates with Neera Tandon. And so right now, why don't we go ahead and just debunk that narrative that we heard from Andrew Gillum, and I'm sure we're going to hear from other uh, corporate Democrats who think that Neera Tandon is fantastic. There's nothing wrong with her, and she's she's truly a progressive who wants to do the right thing. When you look at her record, and more specifically, when you look at who funded the Center for American Progress, which she is the president of, it is abundantly clear that she is not in any way a progressive, even though she touts herself as being one. So let's start off by looking at the funding for this think tank. And if you go back uh, two weeks, I did a segment specifically talking about the very purpose of think tanks. It really is just a one-stop shop uh, to push out corporate policy proposals and to do all sorts of political laundering for things that are actually incredibly damaging to this country. So uh, the Washington Post wrote a piece about who exactly funds this think tank, the Center for American Progress. And here's what we know. Top donors include Walmart and Citigroup and also include the Pharmaceutical Research and Manufacturers of America, which represents leading biotech and biopharma firms and Blue Cross Blue Shield Association. Other large cap donors include Goldman Sachs, the Embassy of the United Arab Emirates, Bank of America, Google, and Time Warner. So the Center for American Progress under Neera Tandon's watch was raking in corporate money, raking in foreign money. 
And the influence of that money certainly showed. It showed in how Neera Tandon consistently attacked policies that were incredibly popular, like Medicare for All. It showed how she uh, would, on one hand, refer to herself as a progressive, on the other hand, viciously attack progressives and the policies that they were desperately fighting for. And um, you can see uh, some very specific statements from Neera Tandon in regard to cutting government programs that help uh, the elderly, that help the poor, government programs that we've paid into through our taxes. In fact, back in 2010, uh, when Barack Obama and Joe Biden were very much on board with cutting um, what they referred to as entitlement spending, Neera Tandon um, explained why she thought that was a great idea. Watch. There's a viewer here who wants you to take us deeper into entitlements mm -hmm. uh, by Twitter. Ms. Tanda, do you know what the president means when he says entitlements are on the table? Any specifics and anything you would endorse? Yeah, I mean, so there are a range of entitlements um, that, you know, I think when we're talking about entitlements, we're talking about Medicare, Social Security, Medicaid. These are programs that, um, that uh, people receive support because of the status that they have. So when after 65, you get funding from Social Security and Medicare. Um, actually, it's grown, it's going getting older for Social Security. But uh, and you know the president has 300 billion dollars <throat> in his budget in cuts in Medicare. Um, that comes on top of cuts in Medicare from um, the Affordable Care Act. So he has put specific cuts in the budget already in Medicare, um, and they had savings in Medicaid in the past. Um, I think the question really is, if we're going to have a deal to address long-term deficit reduction, we need to put both entitlements on the table as well as taxes. It's unfair to ask only middle-class Americans to bear the burden of our deficits. Middle-class Americans actually didn't create the deficits. Um, so I think the challenge is that we should have entitlements on the savings, on, on the entitlements, and uh, the Center for American Progress has, has put forward ideas and proposals to reform the beneficiary structure of Social Security. Some of our progressive allies aren't so aren't uh, as excited about that as we are, but we've put those ideas on the table. But we only th we think that those are legitimate ideas that need to be put part of a proposal where everyone's at the table. Yeah, that's right. I mean, come on. I mean, we can't just ask, uh, you know, the wealthy to sacrifice. We need to ask the poor, uh, the elderly, the disabled to really sacrifice. And what's amazing to me is that one of the tenets of Obama's Affordable Care Act was expanding Medicare, right? This is the policy that corporate Democrats are so defensive of. But then you hear Neera Tandon in that interview talking about the need to cut funding for Medicare um, to, as as Walker Bragman wrote in the Daily Poster, and I highly recommend reading his entire piece, Tandon touted her think tank's 2010 proposal to reduce Social Security benefits in 2012, as Biden was pushing for such cuts in the Obama administration. How fantastic. Uh, the organization also cautioned that Social Security is showing its age and warned that progressive ideas like lifting the payroll tax without addressing other problems in Social Security's benefit design would be a mistake. One of the solutions it proposed was something known as chained CPI. And essentially what chained CPI did was slow down the growth of Social Security benefits. And essentially what it would do is cut Social Security benefits by as much as 2% on average per year which would be devastating for so many Americans, so many elderly people in this country. Uh, but that was what she had advocated for on behalf of the Center for American Progress, which again was funded by these massive corporations that certainly want to continue cutting taxes. And in order to do that, you cut programs that people need in this country. Now, um, after the Affordable Care Act passed, uh, Tandon again justified cutting funding for government programs. Watch. Uh, part of what animated the president was the long-term deficit and debt issues around health care and why one of the most important issues for the president was to ensure that there was savings in the second decade and dramatic savings and it put us on a better cost trajectory. But I think the fact that leadership came together to tackle a large problem, obviously uh, there was a lot of disagreement about that. And you know, one of the big problems we faced and I think people and the commission should realize they'll face as well, 
is that we faced an opposition that both said we need savings in the system and you need to cut costs and your rationing. So remember, she has been nominated by Biden to head the Office of Management and Budget. And this is what's supposed to be somewhat of an independent government agency that puts out research regarding policy proposals. And who's to say that Neera Tandon, or at least the Office of Management and Budget under Neera Tandon's watch, wouldn't put out research arguing that certain government programs are too costly, that they need to be cut. These are real issues that people should be concerned about, and it has nothing to do with Neera Tandon's gender, it has nothing to do with where she comes from, has nothing to do with her background. It has everything to do with the corrupting factors that have led to the policy proposals that she's put out there in the past, and it has everything to do with why she's so vicious toward the left. Deleting tweets isn't going to erase that. Everyone knows it. Everyone's seen it. And regardless of what you delete online, um, there's always a record of what you've put out there. Now, since the Center for American Progress was heavily funded by pharmaceutical companies and biotech firms, it's pretty unsurprising that someone like Neera Tandon would not think of healthcare as a right, but more of a commodity. Watch. We sh there are steps we can take to build on the Affordable Care Act to meet the goal of ensuring health care for every American. And there has been important steps on, costs, on savings and costs, but there are other steps we can take, which is what our language, what the language in the platform has today. But I want to say that I would like to offer language acknowledging that Democrats all agree that health care is a right and that it's not a privilege, that it is something that every American should have, every person should have. Uh, you know, I, I completely agree that this has been a right that we have fought for, presidents have fought for year in and year out. But it's not a right. Uh, it, I mean, it should be a right. It is not a privilege to ensure that people in your country um, don't die uh, from getting sick, are able to go get an annual checkup, are able to, uh, you know, live a decent life without going bankrupt uh, as a result of getting sick. But she has fought the Affordable Care. I mean, she has fought Medicare for All uh, in support of the Affordable Care Act while also supporting cuts that would help keep the Affordable Care Act functioning. It's just incredible when you do a deep dive and you look at what she's advocated for, what she claims she advocates for, and how the very policies that she supported and pushed for um, actually go against what she allegedly wants for this country. And then, of course, when you look at her foreign policy, it's pretty awful as well, especially when you consider that the Center for American Progress was taking in foreign money. Why is that okay? Why is it okay to take money from the UAE? And uh, first of all, I, if I can remember correctly, Democrats were you know, pushing all of these conspiracy theories about Russia's involvement and influence in the United States and its elections. Why are we okay with the UAE having any input in what we do with our foreign policy? How are we allowing them to fund think tanks, which then go and lobby Congress for policies that are favorable to what the UAE wants? Now, uh, we've seen this play out in specific examples as well. As Glenn Greenwald wrote in The Intercept, emails show Tandon arguing that Libyans should be forced to turn over large portions of their oil revenues to repay the United States for the costs incurred in bombing Libya on the grounds that Americans will support future wars only if they see that the countries attacked by the United States pay for the invasions. It's very Trump-esque. You know, Trump says, I'm going to build the wall and we're going to make Mexico pay for it. I mean, it's a similar type of logic that we heard from Neera Tandon years prior to uh, Donald Trump uh, campaigning. And then after one um, cap official, Faz Shakir, noted how perverse it is to first bomb a poor country and then make it turn over its revenues to you for doing so, Tandon argued that this made a great deal of sense, meaning that no, no, no. Asking them to hand over their oil revenues absolutely makes sense. Uh, by the way, how did uh, Libya turn out for you? Totally destabilized the country. Absolute disaster. To then go and ask Libyans to pay us for what we've done is insane. 
Um, now, Cap also served as a propaganda vehicle for uh, Benjamin Netanyahu back in 2015 when Netanyahu was furious with Obama for negotiating with Iran and uh, agreeing to the Iran nuclear deal. Here's a little bit of what that propaganda looked like. Meanwhile, the Center for American Progress, a leading progressive group with close ties to both Clinton and Obama, held an event this week hosting Netanyahu in Washington. That decision reportedly prompted a revolt from some staffers, angered that a liberal group would give Netanyahu a platform. In his opening remarks at the event, Netanyahu told attendees he wanted to speak to a progressive audience. I'd like to talk to a progressive audience about progressive values. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did want to talk to progressives. Now, uh, there was a revolt uh, within the Center for American Progress. Matt Duss, a former foreign policy analyst at CAP, said the idea that CAP would agree to give him bipartisan cover is really disappointing since, quote, this is someone who is an enemy of the progressive agenda, who has targeted Israeli human rights organizations throughout his term and was reelected on the back of blatant anti-Arab race baiting. But if anyone at the journalistic arm of the Center for American Progress, a publication known as Think Progress, wrote anything critical about the Israeli government, well, they would get a stern talking to, as you're about to find out in this next clip. The, the basic story was that we got attacked by a group of right-wing pro-Israel advocates uh, over a period of several months, and instead of kind of standing behind uh, our work, CAP's leadership, uh, turned around and went to the same groups uh, that were attacking us in an attempt to curry favor with them, said, well, we'll tamp down these criticisms of Israel. And as you said... How do you know they said that? Sorry? How do you know they said, we'll tamp down these? <laughs> well, it was it was clear in the emails that, that were leaked that they had been going to groups like AIPAC and saying, we're working on this problem. And, and, um, and then, uh, you know, I sat in an editorial meeting where it was made absolutely clear that AIPAC criticizing APAC was not on the menu and uh, it, and less specifically criticizing Jewish groups that were advocating for Israel was something that we weren't supposed to do in the pages of of the cat products we were putting out. Well, he uh, later left this, uh, left Think Progress, um, and I, I certainly would too if I was being censored by anyone at the organization I was working at. Um, but in regard to those leaked emails, I do want to read a quick excerpt from Glenn Greenwald's piece in The Intercept where he wrote, on, on January 20th, 2012, at the height of the controversy over Think Progress's publications on Israel, Tandon wrote an email to the Center for American Progress founder, John Podesta, and several of her top aides, including Think Progress editor Judd Legum. In that email, Tandem recounted an angry call she received from Ann Lewis, who is also a board member of uh, Block's hardline group, The Israel Project. The email reflects the censorship demands being imposed on CAP over Israel and how seriously Tandon was taking those demands. So the problem with Nira Tandon has everything to do with who she is as a person, what her character is, what drives her, how easily she's influenced by corporate money, and has absolutely nothing to do, in my opinion, uh, with her tweets, couldn't care less, has nothing to do with the way she looks or what her gender is. But despite all of the facts that I laid out, what we're going to hear over and over again from political pundits and from uh, the corporate elite is that poor Nira Tandon, they just hate her because she's a smart, aggressive, successful woman. Poor Nira Tandon, these Republicans are attacking her because she was mean on Twitter. Aren't they hypocritical? But just understand that when it comes to the left, and I don't speak for everyone on the left, I speak for myself. When it comes to people like me specifically, the problem with Nira Tandon, again, is who she is. It's not what she looks like. And I'm pretty tired of the identity politics being weaponized in order to defend horrible people who have pushed horrible policies in this country. Yeah, man, that was great. Thank you for that. That was very cathartic. I mean, near tended. <laughs> Near ten, near ten is like unbelievably stupid. Like that's like the thing. It's like she's like very stupid. But what what she is is she's she just willing to be, she's just willing to be the the human shield. Like she's like a, the front line, uh, the front line of attack, the tip of the spear. She's willing to go to the mattresses 
for these awful people. And, like they'd rather just like stay behind the scenes and just kind of like, uh, you know, eat at their fancy restaurants and, you know, do their thing quietly. Um, she is willing to go out there and just like really stick it to people right in their face, which is why she's being rewarded, right? Like she's being rewarded for right. her service essentially. Um, because like near attended, like doesn't have any original thoughts of her own. Like she's just, she's just, she just doesn't, she doesn't know anything, you know, like that Libya, if you read the Libya email, it's like very clear. She's just like unbeli unbelievably stupid. Um, <laughs> but like it's at the same time, like she is just like she has been one of the probably like maybe her and like uh, Joanne Reed and like a few others like are, are the, the the sort of biggest um, proponents and the, and the most effective weapons in this idea of using identity politics to basically divide and destroy the left and demoralize the left and kind of you know like attack basic economic redistribution all that stuff by using by weaponizing identity politics near tandon has been at the forefront of that she basically has accused bernie and bernie sanders supporters of being sexist racist um misogynist right, right. like that that she has been few people in America have been more successful at using that line than Neera Tandon, which is why, you know, the, her uh, her nomination is just such a blatant slap in the face. I mean, it's, again, it's, I, I said it on TYT yesterday. I mean, this is what losing looks like, right? It's like they they drink our milkshake. They stick Neera Tandon right yeah. down our throats, um, you know, because they can yeah. and because they will and they, and they want to humiliate us. I mean, that's just the that's the that's what it means to win and 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 lose so but yeah it doesn't mean that we can't that we can't make fun of her for being just like just just the absolute worst like just so just so dumb and unhinged um and 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 yeah just one of the worst elements of the ruling class you're right uh we will dunk on her uh we can si se puede um, and I'm enjoying it uh, because you're right. You're right. But that that's what it takes. Right. I mean, someone who is just d lacks who's di intellectually dishonest. Let's just keep it real. But is cool with that because that means you move up the ranks of political power. Right. So she she got her payoff. Um, but not yet, though, because we'll see what happens during confirmation hearings. Um, Republicans have said that she's a, you know, non-starter. They're not even considering, um, you know, voting in favor of her. It really depends on the Senate races, runoff races in Georgia. We'll see. But um, if she doesn't make it, mm. we'll, we'll be, you'll, you'll hear it here first. Guys. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about it. We'll here. be watching that story closely. <laughs> yes.